Hey, Tony from Bikeberry, and today what we're going to talk about is an introduction to port work. Now, up to this point, I've done everything pretty much stock, no modifications, just parts that you could buy to add on to get performance or a different style or different look. Um, any custom work that we've done so far has been mostly to the bike. The engine I've left alone up till now. So we all know everybody loves port work. They love talking about it. Now, when I've looked at the content that's currently out there, there's a lot and there's a lot of little different tricks. So what I'm going to do is teach you from the very basics all the way to as advanced as we want to go. So in the beginning here, what we're going to work on is getting the intake and the outtake to perform at its optimum level as a stock engine kit. That's a really great place to start. It'll teach you proper port work so that as you get advanced, you can get way more in depth and make this thing perform at its highest level. Let's roll. First up is the intake port, which is the lowest port on the cylinder body. So you can see that it goes down into the crankcase. So your air and fuel mixture goes down into the crankcase. Now look at the opposite side where the exhaust port is. If I'm looking at, let's say from here, if I'm looking at the intake port compared to the exhaust port, the exhaust port goes off to the left and it's higher, okay? So here's exhaust port there and look at the intake port, right? Definitely different levels, huh? Then you have your transfer ports. These are the open type. I'll show you a closed type here in a second. During the casting process, as the molds get older and things like that, things get a little bit more burred and more flashing, which is little bits of metal stuck on the inside of these openings. So they become rough. They're not as you know smooth in the beginning as they were. So then you're exhaust doesn't work as well, things like that. So that's really what we're cleaning up here is leftover pieces of metal from the molding process. You really want to think of your engine like a pump. A pump has inlet and outlet. So let's think of like pumping an old well pump. Water comes up from the bottom and out the spigot. Well, you want that flow to be as smooth as possible. And so when you're talking about a little engine and you want to increase efficiency, having those ports cleaned up is going to make a world of difference. Here are the two most common cylinder bodies that you're going to come across. So the open transfer type, so you can see that there's really no hindrance in the fuel coming up out of the crankcase. This is just a polished uh, casting of this head material. The iron sleeve type is closed off in the transfer ports. So you can see that as you rotate it around, there's all of your ports in the wall. Now, when they make these, they have to ensure that the hole in the iron sleeve is going to be the right size, made it up to the this casting. So you're gonna have all kinds of uh, flashing and burrs on the inside of this as part of the manufacturing process. So that's what you wanna go in and clean up to get maximum efficiency. Next up, let's look at the tools that we're going to need. You can see that I got my tried and true files here. This one's a flat with a rounded over edge on it. Let's see if you can see that. That one's great. Just a round one is nice. That one works great. And then just your classic flat one, just in case you need to reach it in there and get some burrs off the edge. Other than that, I thought as far as rotary tools, what are you going to need? You're going to go and you're going to buy a basic one. And it's a great place to start. The Dremel 3000 is one that I chose. It's a really good price range and it came with a good variety of bits to try, especially like the polishing ones and things like that. I thought that's a good place to start. And then I thought this was really interesting. Let's see what the different bits like for sharpening chainsaws would do. I just thought that would be fun. But the standard that everybody uses is tungsten carbide bits, these cross hatch kind of uh, cutters. So I definitely got a couple of them to try and see how they work. But this is the standard. If you look at anybody else who's talking about how to do this, that's what they use. So that's industry standard. But I thought grinding bits would be fun. Even some sanding uh, little bands would be fun to try. And I don't think that'll actually fit into anything, but I got it because we could test it out. The next thing I got was a thousand grit sandpaper. And this is for final polishing of your exhaust side. 
So please note that you want turbulence on your intake and you want smooth exit on your exhaust side. Now let's dive deep in the master plan that we want to accomplish for efficiency in our two stroke engine. Then over time, I'll record videos on each and every step. That way you can go directly to the video and it'll have the step that you're working on. Then you'll go to the next video and the next video and so on and so forth. To understand what we're going after, let's look at each individual port. This is the intake side. And as we said before, you notice that it goes down into the crankcase, okay? So we want efficiency in that pathway. So what happens is not turbulent enough, meaning that the surface in here isn't roughened up correctly so that the fuel and the air stay atomized, right? We want it to be like aerosol, really. And we want any of these edges to be burr-free and smooth and slightly chamfered. On the exhaust side, you want to make sure that the walls are as smooth as possible. The smoother it is, even a mirror finish will help exhaust the gas fumes the most efficiently. You can't go wrong with getting it smoother than smooth. On open transfer ports like this, you just really want to make sure that all edges are as smooth as possible so that your rings don't catch on anything. To get a good idea of flashing, check out the iron sleeve. See how much is in there? Which is a good thing because you want to make sure there's plenty of iron around that that you can come in and clean up nicely. So that's a good thing, but you got to go in there and clean it up. Another level in maximizing efficiency is to make sure the corners are rounded. This one's pretty good. It has nice rounded corners compared to this one that's square. So that's something that will go in and open them up a little bit and round out those corners. Same goes for the exhaust side. See how it's flat, has a hard edge, and then it does a curve. We want to make that as rounded as possible. Like this one here. See how it's already that way? That's a good example. So those steps that we just covered are the most important for getting your ported journey started. So this will give you a nice, efficient engine as far as all the ports will be cleaned and everything will be able to move through them efficiently. Then what we'll do once we get past a few videos is we'll talk about like raising the roof on the exhaust port and things like that that'll actually change some of the timing. But that's going to require a little bit different uh, technique and knowledge as far as what we're after when we do those things. You don't want to do those things until you've learned how to properly port and clean up an engine for efficiency's sake. So go to the next video in the series and let's roll on port work.